I think that that kind of leads us to the to the next portion, which is looking at what is the burden of this disease on on our patients, because you know you and you just you just hit kind of the nail on the head, Margaret, because people can come into this diagnosis with a lot of baggage or with no knowledge at all. Either they've watched their mother or father have debilitating arthritis and psoriasis and depression associated with it. And so therefore, when you tell them that, they're gonna fall apart because they've seen the impact it's had on family members or they've never heard of it before mm -hmm. and, di and didn't think anyone else that they know or, or have, have in their family has it. So you have to kind of feel it out because the burden of the disease can be tremendous in three different ways that I see it. The burden of disease on the psychosocial side of things in terms of having a disease that's on the skin that's always seen by others. You know, there is an increased risk of depression in patients with, um, with psoriasis, we know that. The general, right now the current data is about eight and a half percent of Americans are treated for depression. Well, 16 and a half percent claim to have depression with the diagnosis of psoriasis is almost twice as prevalent as the general population. But we also see that it impacts their work because if you can't go to work, it, it impacts the, the pocketbook, mm -hmm. you know, as well. So we're talking about intimacy issues with relationships, we're talking about uh, risk of depression, suicidal ideation associated with it. We're talking about the impact upon your ability to have gainful employment. Mm -hmm. And then and then just quality of life. You know, think about what you're gonna do in the future. Can I pick up my kids? Can I go on hikes? Am I gonna be able to do these things? And something that I think I've heard you say before, which impacted me, is that when patients are diagnosed with cancer or lose their sight, very unfortunate things, the response from others is very different, even though that's uh, a debilitating information to receive, because there, there's, there's empathy, there's empathy, empathy there and mm -hmm. sympathy there. But when someone's diagnosed with this visible disease, mm -hmm. this is, which is affecting them, the response is very different. It's not empathy or sympathy. It's more of, of a re well, repulsion is probably a hard word, but it's definitely one of uh, that's mm -hmm. different than someone else. I think patients dealing. feel that so, way. You know, I have a lot of patients who report you know, going to the pool and people getting out of the hot tub when they get in. I had a patient tell me that or, um, and the data just that shows um, that the psychosocial burden as well as the physical burden um, with psoriasis could be equivalent to chronic lung disease, right? So when I worked in primary care before dermatology, lung disease patients, that's a lot. I mean, the physical burden and the psychosocial burden there for those patients, when I saw the the data that showed that patients ranked their physical burden and, and emotional burden equivalent to those patients really, really surprised me because I feel like patients don't complain as much, but I also think sometimes they don't want to be seen as a complainer. So I think we need to dig a little more, more ask those patients a little bit more. How, how are you feeling? Because if they have hypertension or diabetes, nobody knows, right? But if you have psoriasis on your hands or arms or legs, people can see that. And so I think that really impacts the patients in a way that those of us without psoriasis may not consider, even though we take care of them. I have seen, uh, looking at it over the last few decades, when we had drugs that would not clear patients, we could sure. get them better, or we could improve certain areas, or they could pick months out of the year in which they could be clear and other months they wouldn't. And it was just incredibly impactful when we all we had was, you know, methotrexate, phototherapy, topical treatments. And then to see now where the disease is gone from their life. And one of the other things that I really think about is knowing what would have happened to patients through the years had they not been able to be clear. I always think about a 20 year old that showed up at my clinic a couple years ago in May and she had experienced her freshman year of college after having developed psoriasis at 18, had a strep throat and her disease became visible on her face and everywhere. And she had to go through rush and go through the whole sorority thing in her whole first year of college with psoriasis and the dermatologist at the college town that she was at given her topical therapy for small plaque and gut tape psoriasis, which wasn't gonna work. Some phototherapy, which didn't help. And then when we got her clear, she made the comment to me, my freshman year would have been a completely different experience if I'd have been clear. Mm -hmm. Because I think the psychosocial burden and as clinicians, we have to think we have one job and that is to help people be at their maximum level of wellness with everything that we have in our armamentarium. And looking at the burden of disease, just think about if you can, if this person be, could be clear, 
what other choices and experiences they they might have. Yeah. And because yeah. it's a, it is a visible disease, and we think it, we treat visible diseases all the time: vitiligo, alopecia disorders, and those people are greatly disturbed by but because they can't hide it they feel especially if it's a flaky bloody disease and they're greasy from uh over the counters or topicals they they really don't feel like they fit in and they will say things like i just want to be clean mm -hmm. and they don't even know that they can use the word clear they're just thinking how do i not look so awful well and i'm just going to say too while it is a visible disease there is an internal burden that that we recognize as well and that and that burden and we'll, we will we will get to this uh maybe a little later on but that burden is in the form of a lot of comorbidities that that we have to uh that we have to look at and manage because the increased risk the psoriasis itself being a pro-inflammatory autoimmune disease this is an inflammatory state and because of that the burden of disease impacts the increased risk of diabetes, increases of hypertension, increases of certain types of cancers. And so arthritis, of course, we know is there too. And uh, I think we'll probably hone in uh, in that in a little bit, but, but and that's I think important for, for us our to patients, see that. One really important question to ask them is, do you have a primary care provider? I had a patient say just recently, um, you and my OBGYN are, and I was like, well, I'm not a primary care provider, dermatology PA. Um, and so I encourage them to get a primary care provider because of the cardiovascular risk factors, making sure that if they have other um, heart disease risk factors in their family, that they're screened appropriately and that they're managed correctly by us and their primary care provider.